You were all set. Go ahead. Good morning. And thank you for attending our uh, public hearing on changes to various Town of Barnstable permit and program fees that take effect on January 1st, 2023. So these are calendar year fees from January 1 through December 31st. We're also uh, holding a hearing relevant to proposed taxi meter rate increases for taxi license to operate within the town of Barnstable effective January 1st, 2023. Um, and all of these are being held today, um, obviously November 15th, 2022 being 11 a.m. Uh, this is a remote hearing by Zoom. And so those wishing to provide public comment may do so by accessing the meeting via Zoom link or by telephone. Um, and the telephone number is, has been referenced in the public notice. And um, I believe it is 888-475-4499. Four seven five four four nine nine. If somebody wants to call in and make public comment rather than joining us through our Zoom link, information regarding this um, fee hearing, the proposed changes to the you know proposed changes for these calendar year fees will be available on the town managers. Um, Town of Barnstable website. Uh, you just go into www.town.barnstable.ma.us, um, go into Town Manager, and you can find these proposed fees. So, the way that we'll move forward with this is um, we have uh, four major areas of uh, four departmental areas of proposed fee changes. The first being community services, the second being, um, I'm sorry, MEA, and there's three major, I apologize. And the final being taxi rate. Um, I will go through each of those respective departments and then the divisions within each of them. In the case of community services, it'll be golf, recreation, and Hyannis Youth and Community Center. In the case of MEA, Marine Environmental Affairs, it will be Sandy Neck and Recreational Shellfish, and then Taxi Bay. So I will present the fees as proposed. Um, I will ask Director Mills, Director of Finance, if he has any comments at, the, at that time. Then I will ask for staff for any comments or justification from that respective division of the department. And then I will ask the public if they have any comments. When we conclude that review, I will take these under review for 30 days and I will either um, approve as proposed or uh, modify to no more than what is proposed or not approved. And uh, we will post that decision um, sometime after that 30-day period. We allow for the 30 days because many times our public can't join us for the hearing. So we encourage them during that period to communicate with us um, relative to any comment they have on those proposed fees. So at this time, I'll move into our community services department, golf division, proposed fees for calendar year um, 2023. 
All right, so annual passes. There are three categories under annual pass category, uh, non-residential, non-resident annual pass, Current fee is 1640. Proposed fee is 1795, an increase of $155. Non-resident family pass. Current fee is $2,625. It'll go to $2,850 or an increase of $225. Non-resident 80 plus pass is currently $1,200. It'll move to $1,235 or an increase of $35. Driving range category, residential single. Current fee is $245. It'll go to $255 or a $10 increase. Residential additional family member will go from $190 to $195 for a $5 increase. Non-resident single will go from $275 to $295, a $20 increase. Residential green fees category. Old Barnstable um, green fees from October 9th till April 30th will go from $25 to $30 for a green fee, $5 in. Next category, pass holder cart fees. Pass holder cart fees, Hyannis 18 holes year round, currently $16 will go to $18, a $2 increase. Hyannis nine holes year round, $9 will go to $10, a $1 increase. Handicap and 75 plus 18 holes, currently $14 will go to 15, a $1 increase. And handicap and 75 plus nine holes, currently $8 will go to $9, a $1 increase. Public cart, 18 holes, public cart fee, um, let's see, is currently. $22 will go to $23 or a $1 increase. Nine holes, currently $12 will go to $13, a $1 increase. I'm going to stop now within community services for the golf division. I'm going to ask Director Milne if he has any comments at this point on the proposed fees. Well, thank you, Tom Manager Els. Um, after taking a look at these fees and looking at the um, increasing costs that the golf operations have had to absorb, with, particularly with utilities and fuel and labor costs, as well as a um, four-year or five-year capital plan outlook as to what we need to do out at these facilities, um, I would just like to comment that it's my my recommendation um, to I agree with these uh, proposed fee increases. Thank you. Thank you, Director Mill. Uh, Director Noonan, will you or your staff have any comments relevant to the proposed fees? Thank you, Manager Ells. Good morning, everyone. Madeline Noonan, Director of Community Services. Uh, my team are happy to be here today to um, provide rationale for um, the proposed fees. Um, I will turn it over to Jesse Sheckman, our Director of Golf, but before I, I do that, I do want to state um, for the record that both um, the Golf Committee and the Recreation Commission have voted in support of all of the proposed fees that we're bringing before you today. So with that, thanks, Jesse. Good morning. Thank you, everybody. Um, Jesse Sheckman here, Director of Golf. So uh, the current fiscal year golf division expense budget is 3% higher than last year's. Uh, aside from contractually obligated increases in personnel expenses, uh, the biggest factors in rising costs are utilities, credit card processing fees, lease of a new golf cart fleet for both courses, and products specifically associated with our environmentally sustainable land management plan. Uh, I'm happy to say, even with these rising costs, revenues have been and are forecasted to continue to be sufficient enough to cover our operating expenses. For that reason, 
we feel that any increase to resident pass holder fees would be in conflict with our purpose statement, which among other things tasked us with providing affordable recreational opportunities to our residents. As our facilities have become notably busier in recent years, uh, the number one complaint we've received from resident pass holders is in regards to access. Uh, so that's a substantial part of the reason we proposed an increase to all non-resident pass holder categories, but left the residents as is. Uh, we've also proposed various increases in cart fees. This will help to offset the higher cost of the new fleet, along with uh, the obvious and substantial increases in fuel prices. Overall, we, we feel we've put forth a rate and free structure that uh, achieves the balancing act of covering our operating expenses and being fiscally responsible to the town, while at the same time uh, still providing exceptional value uh, to our customers and residents. Um, as Maddie stated, we did uh, get approval from the Golf Committee on these rates, and thank you for, for your time. I'd be happy to take any questions, should there be any. Okay, thank you very much. We appreciate that overview. At this time, uh, I will take any public comment that we may have relevant to the golf division the proposed changes. Sarah, do we have any public comment? I one? don't believe there's any public comment on this item. Okay, as we progress through this, if for some reason someone joins us, please feel comfortable to uh, let me know that perhaps during uh, a public comment uh, opportunity on another item, and we will, um, you know, allow them to uh, make that comment. Okay. Thank you. All right, at this point, as stated earlier, I will take the golf proposed golf fees under advisement. Um, I do expect to allow for public comment for 30 days. And then um, I will, as described, approve as proposed, approve less than proposed, or not approve. And that would mean it would remain at the current fee. Thank you. Okay, we'll move on to recreation division. Under the category of recreation program fees, summer leisure program, currently $1,200, is proposed at $1,450, a $250 a year increase. Summer tennis, current fee is $70, proposed $80, a $10 increase. Dance, current is $65, proposed is $70, a $5 increase. Summer craft, arts and crafts, $60, proposed fee of $65, a $5 increase. Field hockey, $70, proposed for $75, a $5 increase. Gymnastics, $75 to $100, a $25 increase. Basketball K through three, currently $75. It would go to $80, a $5 increase. Basketball four, four and five, $90 to $95, a $5 increase. Basketball six and seven, $90 to $95, a $5 increase. Volleyball. $75 to $85, a $10 increase. Swim lessons, water babies in level one and two, $45 current would move to $50 proposed, a $5 increase. Swim lessons levels three to six, currently $60 would move to $65, a $5 increase. Swim lessons advanced. Currently $65 would move to $70, a $5 increase. Sailing lessons, $100 would move to $110, a $10 increase. Junior lifeguarding, current fee of $65 would move to $70, a $5 increase. 
Beach event permitting. Beach events from Memorial Day to Labor Day, there currently isn't a specific fee for this, and it would move to $2,500, the proposed fee. Beach event out of season, currently not applicable, it would move to $1,500. Beach parking permits and way to water permits. Residential annual parking permit is currently $45. It would move to $50, a $5 increase. Landlord parking permit, currently $375, would move to $475, a $100 increase. Seasonal parking permit, currently $275, would move to $350, a $75 increase. Veterans Beach only annual, $90 would move to $100, a $10 increase. Handicap annual parking permit, currently $20 would move to $25 or a $5 increase. Weekly parking permit, currently $80 would move to $110 or a $30 increase. East Bay boat ramp, with residential permit is currently 10, it would move to $15 or a $5 increase. And veterans discount pass at Veterans Beach is currently $25, that would move to $10 or a $15 increase. That concludes proposed recreation division proposed fee changes. At this time, I'll ask if Director Milne has any comments. Thank you, Town Manager Els. Um, so, in addition to um, you know having, I'll defer to the Recreation Division staff um, as far as the details go and how difficult it has been to find um, individuals to fill positions like lifeguards and a summer leisure program staff. Um, you know, we need to remain competitive in order to attract these staff. Um, and I also would like to point out that we have invested over a million dollars in some of our beach facilities over the last couple of years. And our five-year capital plan is looking at investing potentially another 10 to 12 million. Um, so while these fee, proposed fee increases won't allow us to implement fully all of those um, anticipated improvements, it will certainly help address some um, but uh, so I just want to state that you know these fee increases um, I would support, particularly in in those particular areas, the need to attract quality staff, as well as maintaining our multiple beach facilities throughout town. Thank you. Thank you, Director Mel. At this time, Director Noonan, do you or your staff? have any comment or justification of the proposed fee. Thank you again, Manager Ells. And I want to concur with what Director Milne stated. I mean, that was, you know, a lot of our sort of um, analysis and justification and working through these fee increases. I will turn it over to our Director of Recreation, John Gleason, um, for um, a more detailed um, rationale. Thanks, John. Uh, good morning, John Gleason, Recreation Director. Um, as Jesse stated um, about his recreation budget from FY 23 to 22, we saw just over or just under a 2% increase uh, with the higher staffing costs for full time seasonal staff. And again, like Director Milne said, uh, recruiting and attracting seasonal staff to work for us results, you know, in these uh, high payroll costs that we see. Um, with programs and everything else, we're also seeing the rise of costs for supplies, shipping charges, uh, specifically transportation, rental fees to rent out facilities that we use. Um, and we always want to make sure we still maintain high level programming. Um, so that's why we need to uh, have these increased fees. Uh, one of our largest fee increases was our summer leisure program, uh, which uh, saw additional fee increases last year and again this year is uh, we did a transportation bid recently which came in extremely high and along with the fact of minimum wage going up um, we uh, need to increase by the $250 if you break it down per week it's only an additional $35 per week 
And if you want to break it down further by per hour, we're $5.18 per hour. And if we compare ourselves to a nonprofit that runs a camp or a private camp, a private camp in the area is $15 per hour. That's three times as much as we cost, or the nonprofit is double, uh, uh, more than double of what we cost per hour. So we are still uh, very, uh, very reasonably priced and we offer a highly uh, successful summer program that a lot of kids and families enjoy. Um, as far as beach related fees, uh, we never had a specific fee regards to our special events, um, our best buddies event or our you know sprint triathlons. So we wanted to have a fee in place. So when those events happen, uh, there's something officially on the uh, record for those. Um, just really appreciate the, the hearing our rationale for it. And if you have any questions, be glad to answer those. Um, also, again, to uh, the Recreation Commission did approve our fees. And also we do provide financial aid to any uh, family out there that needs assistance affording our programs. We also financial aid. And for those families, uh, residents that don't qualify for financial aid, we also do provide uh, community uh, development block grant money for those families that uh, need uh, help uh, assisting. And then lastly too, uh, we always do payment plans. So if some family needs to make payments over the course of the program, uh, we'd be glad to do that. So make sure every kid can participate in our programs and not leave anyone out. Um, but that, uh, that's it for me. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Thank you both on that. Um, are, at this point, I'll take public comment. Is there any public comment? You have Lauren Friel. Lauren, feel Hi. free to provide your comment. Thank you. Um, I'm here today to speak specifically to the increase on um, the proposal for the leisure program, the summer program. Um, I have a son who has been in the program since 2017, I think was the first summer that he was in the program. Um, when he started in 2017, it was $750. And the proposal for the fee for this summer is now $1,450. So that means in five, six years, it's increased almost double. Um, during COVID, it went up to $950. Uh, last summer, it went up to $1,250. And now the proposal is $1,450. So that means in two years, it will have increased $500. Um, I fully acknowledge that there are increased expenses we all know that things cost more right now. And I understand the limitations that the rec department's under as far as finding and attracting quality uh, applicants for some of these positions. Um, I, I'm just struggling with the fact that, I mean, obviously it's, it's a significant increase, $500 in two years. And I, I know John spoke to financial aid and grants that are available. Um, the fact of the matter is most of the people that attend this program, they simply don't qualify for any of that. It's all tied to being within a certain percentage of the federal poverty line. Um, I'm a single parent. I'm the mother of an 11 year old. Um, I'm just frustrated. I feel like it's another example of why we're having difficulty retaining and keeping young working families on Cape Cod. Um, $500 in two years is a significant increase for a program. And I acknowledge, um, uh, you know, all everything that both um, Ms. Noonan and Mr. Gleason went through as far as the increased expenses. And I, and I realize um, all the difficulties you're all facing, um, getting employees and that, you know, things just cost a lot more today. But um, I just wanted to make a point to, I have talked to a number of people in the past 24 hours who have kids, some of them who have multiple children who attend this program every summer. And I think people um, are simply going to either make other arrangements this summer going forward, or maybe potentially not send a kid that's on the cusp of being able to stay home alone because it's a significant increase in the price. And unfortunately, there are going to be people now who are deterred from either sending their kids or they just simply may not be able to send their kids because they don't qualify for the financial aid or the grants that you've mentioned, um, but they're simply just trying to make ends meet. So um, I 
strongly urge you to not increase the price of the program. I would hope at all this summer, I think increasing it to 1250 for last summer was significant as is and an additional uh, $200 on top of it for all of the reasons that I've outlined. Um, I just, I simply think it's, it's a hardship for most people. And I think it will impact the enrollment and the numbers and the people that you're going to see come out um, and enroll in the program. And, you know, my son has enjoyed it every summer. He um, participates in the SOAR program right now after school, which is at no cost. And he attends the RAC program every summer, but he's going to be 12 this winter. And now I'm in a position where I'm going to consider potentially letting him stay home alone some days because of the increased cost in this program. And I know that there are many people that I spoke to within the last 24 hours who didn't have the opportunity to attend this meeting because it's in the middle of the day on a working, uh, a work day for most people. Um, and a lot of people feel the same way and hopefully they will reach out, um, you know, even after this meeting, if they can't attend to express the same concerns that I know that a lot of them have. So I apologize for rambling, but I hope um, I got my point through. Thank you. Thank you. I believe next is Jennifer Carroll. Jennifer. Hi, my name is uh, Rachel. I'm on Jen's phone because she's too nervous to talk. <laughs> but um, I have two kids in the program. And last year I paid for a third kid that I is a friend of my son's because they didn't have money to send him. And the additional cost of that would make me not be able to send, send him, which would be unfortunate. He'd be in front of a computer screen all day long by himself as, a, as his only child doing nothing, um, which we've seen during COVID, kids that stayed home, obviously there's a lot more problems that were associated with that related to they can't interact socially with people. They don't know how to behave around different you know, types of people. And my kids are all athletes. And so when I sent them to the rec program, there were some times where I had to then pay for them to go to football. At this point, it's like, I wouldn't even, I'd have to choose. Am I going to have them do the football for a couple of weeks and find another week program? Because I'd still be paying regardless if they were there or not. And then they'd have to do another sport, which would then put an even bigger burden. So at this point, I'm going to have to choose my son's athletic ability to try to improve that this summer instead of going to play um, and hang out at rec and be watched and allow them to stay home. And hopefully they're fine because <laughs> they're just on the, the cusp of that as well. Cause they're 10 there. I have two 10 year olds that go to the program and one's in fourth grade, one's in fifth grade. Um, so I'm trying to manage the increase of cost and then all of a sudden allow them to do and prosper and thrive in sports because on Cape Cod, I'm from Cape Cod. The only thing that you have is sports to keep you busy and out of trouble. And if you take that away from them, then you're only going to allow them to then figure out what they can do. And then sometimes they get themselves in a lot of trouble. And I witnessed that firsthand when I went to high school and stuff on the Cape um, because of the programs getting, if the programs get taken away from the kids, then I, cause I don't have enough money to pay for both of them all summer to go there, especially since now I, I have another kid that I'm trying to help out with their family and they're not going to qualify, but they work paycheck to paycheck. So I try and help out the, most, the best that I can with somebody who's not even my child. Um, and I think there's other parents that are doing the same, even for the Barnesville Youth Basketball League, people that can't even afford, they don't, they're, they're paying for other kids to play um, just to get them to get out of the house and you know start thriving in something. So I think that the summer leisure program, the increase in that rate is, is a huge, huge difference. And I do appreciate everything that you guys said of why the increase happened, but from a family, you know, and I know you also brought up like the private, the private um, summer camps. Well, those parents can afford it and they make a lot more money than some of these other parents. So they can afford to send them to private school, private everything. It's just, it's not an option for most parents on the Cape. Um, so I hope you can appreciate what we have to say today and really take that into consideration before you increase these rates to that 1450, because it will pose a huge burden um, on a bunch of families on the Cape. Thank you very much for your comment. Does not appear we have any additional um, public comment for this item. Okay, thank you. As I've said earlier, um, and for one of the first commenter had noted that not everybody can make it to this hearing. That's why I typically take rates under advisement for 30 days, encourage our public 
to communicate with us via any method they want, face-to-face, -face, email, letter, uh, chat, whatever works for you. Um, let us know. Uh, we always appreciate the public comment. We will take it under advisement. And again, my well, the action that I will take will, after that 30-day period, I will either approve as proposed, approve less than proposed, or not approve, and therefore it will remain at the current rate. Thank you. Okay, next category. I will move into the Youth and Community Division proposed fees. In the category of rink rental fees, ICE rink rental hourly. Depending on time of year and time of day, I believe it's broken into three major rate categories currently. 175 hourly, 225 hourly, or 250. The proposed fees would be 200 250 or 275. So across that range, a $25 increase. Dry rink rental hourly, currently $100 would go to $125 or a $25 increase. Dry rink rental daily, currently $1,100. It would go to $1,250 or a $150 increase. Next category, learn to skate program fees. Hockey and figure skating resident, currently $95, would go to $100, a $5 increase. Hockey and figure skating non-resident is currently $105, it would go to $110 or a $5 increase. Next category, skating fees, rental and sharpening. Adult admission to public skate is currently $7. It would go to $8, $1 increase. Student admission to public skating, $5 would go to $6, a $1 increase. Senior admission to public skating is currently $2. It would go to $3 or a $1 increase. Walk-on admission is currently $15. It would go to $16 or a $1 increase. And stick practice admission is currently 10. It would go to 12 or a $2 increase. Punch card, 10 admissions per card. Adult punch card, $70 would go to $80 or a $10 increase. Student punch card, currently $50 would go to $60 or a $10 increase. Senior punch card, currently $20 would go to $30 or a $10 increase. Walk-on free skate punch card, currently 150 would go to 160 for a $10 increase. Stick practice punch card, currently 100 would go to 120 or a $20 increase. Skate sharpening punch card, currently $60 would go to $70 or a $10 increase. Skate rental $5 would go to $6, a $1 increase. Individual skate sharpening is currently $6. It would go to $7 or a $1 increase. At this time, I'll ask Director Mills if he has any comments relevant to these proposed fees. Thank you, Town Manager Ells. Um, so this operation currently receives a significant general fund subsidy. Uh, we recognize that and we will continue to support this operation through general fund subsidy. Um, even with these proposed fee increases, it's going to require us to continue to grow that investment um, to support this operation. We've invested over $4 million in this facility recently through capital improvements. Have another $4.5 million scheduled for mechanical systems over there in the next five years. Um, but one question I do have is with the proposed hourly rate increases for ICE rental, which is the main source of revenue over there, will it allow us to continue to remain competitive um, in, with the surrounding area um, with those new rates? Thank you. Thank you, Director Mill. And question noted, hopefully when we get to staff 
um, they can include that in their justification and comments. All right, at this time, um, Director Noonan or your staff, um, could you, do you, or do you have any uh, comment or justification? Yes, thank you, Manager Ells. Um, to respond to Director Noonan's question as far as remaining competitive, um, our HYCC manager, Mark Bordley, who will provide the justification momentarily, um, had done an analysis, a comparison of um, rink rates throughout the state, and we tend to lean towards the lower end. Um, so I think as far as trying to remain, um, again, trying to balance the access and affordability while also being mindful of our um, fiscal obligations um, with the HYCC um, being an enterprise account and the fact that we have not um, increased the ICE, the tiered rates, which Mark will go into in more detail, um, some of them since the building first opened. So we did feel that it was an appropriate time um, given you know, a lot of the increased costs that we're seeing in operations and utilities. Um, so I will pass it over to Mark for um, any further information he wants to share. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Madeline, and thank you, uh, Manager Ells and Director Milne. Um, to talk on the increases, uh, as Madeline said, we did do a cost survey analysis with some other rinks throughout the state, and we're trying to stay very competitive with those rinks. And as she mentioned, we definitely tend to be on the lower side, the majority of those rinks. Um, as far as the increases, as Madeline said, we haven't increased since FY19. And at the time we had four levels of, of rates and they changed to three. Um, the 250 and the 225 rate have not changed since the building opened. Um, so we're really just kind of, we've made four into three and now kind of going up across the board on those. Um, the rest of those rate increases as you were reading them off, you can tell they're kind of just in line with one another, they go up a dollar, punch cards, because they have 10, they go up uh, $10. Um, the, with the increased cost of staffing, equipment, and utilities, we found it very necessary to uh, increase our costs, as I mentioned, just to stay competitive with other rink, rinks in the area. Um, we did get the Rec Commission support, um, and that, that's about it on my end. Okay. Uh, I welcome any comments or questions. Um, and thank you. All right. Thank you. Okay. At this time, uh, I will move to any public comment. Is there any public comment on these proposed fees? At this time, we would like Casey Stone to speak. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Um, I'm the new treasurer over at BYAJ. I've been on the board for three years. Um, just took over as treasurer last month. Um, so I'm here to talk on the um, rank rental increase. BYJ is the biggest customer at um, HYCC. We rent um, ice every night of the week and um, every weekend, and we are a nonprofit. So this $25 per ice rental would really hurt us. And ultimately, we have to pass it down to um, our participants because we don't have the funds to cover it. So we already know that hockey is an expensive sport. Anyone here that has their kid in hockey knows that. Um, BYAJ is the only organization in Barnstable that's providing a nonprofit. Um, and we do it at the lowest cost, almost in half of some of the for-profit that rents um, ice at the rink. So this would really go against what we're trying to do, which is grow our program and give as many kids in Barnstable and the surrounding areas access to hockey. Um, so we'd really ask that you don't do that or maybe consider putting in a nonprofit rate. I do know that if we were to rent um, the gym, for instance, for Barnstable Little League, which um, I'm also a part of, there's a nonprofit rate and it's significantly lower than for profit. So perhaps we could consider putting in a nonprofit rate. UIHA would greatly um, benefit from that. And if we're able to lower our costs, we can lower them to our participants and get more people in there. And I understand your need to increase revenue there. I get that it's an expensive building and it's a wonderful building and we're lucky to be there. Um, but we, the way to do that is by filling the ice more, right? And the way to do that with BYHA is to grow our program. So every time we increase costs, 
we are um, shutting some people out from hockey. The best way to fill that um, place full of, uh, you know, fill the ice is to get more teams for us. And we've seen shrinking the last few years and we're, we're coming back and, um, you know, we start our farm program tonight and I'll say we have 36 kids currently registered, but every time we increase that rate, we're going to lose kids as hockey goes on because it gets more expensive. The equipment's more expensive. And if the ice more is more expensive, then our tuition is more expensive. BYHA does not rent ice at any other program on Cape Cod. And I know we might be competitive or HYCC might be competitive across the state, but if you are you competitive across the Cape? Because from what I see at Tony Kent or Charles Moore or Falmouth or even Gallo, we could get cheaper ice, but we are committed to HYCC because we are Barnstable Youth Hockey. So I'd ask that you do not raise those rates. It will hurt our kids. Um, we do provide scholarships when we can, but we are a nonprofit, so it's hard. Um, so I just ask that you take that into consideration. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. It does not appear that we have any additional public comment for this item. Okay, thank you very much. And as I said in prior, um, we'll be taking the, um, you know, the, these rec fees under advisement and review for 30 days. So we encourage the public to communicate with us relevant to them. And then again, I will make decisions as to whether to approve as proposed, approved, reduced, below proposed, or not to approve it all and they'll remain at the current. Thank you. Okay, at this time, uh, that concludes Community Services Department. Thank you all. And I'll move on to Marine and Environmental Affairs Department. Now, Marine Environmental Defair Affairs um, will be Sandy Neck and then Recreational Shellfish Fee Proposals. And I'll begin with Sandy Neck. So for Sandy Neck, and I'm only going to state the proposed fee change. Under special permits, groups over 100 for 2023. Um, let's see here. Groups over 100 for 2023. And when we get to staff support, if there is Additional reason why I should be reading the ones that have not changed. Um, or I, actually, I will pause for a moment. Um, Nina Coleman. Here. Is there a reason for me to read the current versus proposed fees that have not changed that you have listed in this? No, sir, I can speak to the, the one important one with regard to that, but okay, I, good. you can then, just carry on. Yes, thank you. Appreciate appreciate it. Um, then I'll go back to reading the proposed fee changes. Groups over 100. Um, currently, there isn't a fee, and the proposed fee would be $100. Under Special permits, campfire permit is currently $10. It would go to $20, a $10 increase. Under the category of annual off-road vehicle permits, um, including campfire permits, a non-resident permit is currently $190. It would go to $220 or a $30 increase. A cottage odor permit is currently $40. It would go to $45 or a $5 increase. Trailer, currently $35. It would go to a $40 or $5 increase. Fall, a next category, fall off-road vehicle permits, including campfire permits, starting the Tuesday after Labor Day. No changes in that category. Winter off-road vehicle 
permits, including campfires, starting the Tuesday after Columbus Day. Resident is currently $30. It would go to $20, a $10 decrease. Non-resident is currently $60. It would go to $40 or a $20 decrease. Next category, overnight camping, reservation fees will apply. Slide on truck camper resident, ten, currently $10 would go to 11 or a $1 increase. Slide on truck camper non-resident, currently $20 would go to $22 or a $2 increase. All other RV campers residential, Currently $10 would go to $15 or a $5 increase. All other RV campers non-resident, currently 20 would go to $30 or a $10 increase. Chase vehicles, currently $5 would go to $6 or a $1 increase. At this time, that concludes the proposed fee increases. And I would ask Director Mill if he has any comments. Thank you. Thank you, Town Manager Ells. Um, I would just like to comment that I support the proposed changes as um, presented here by Director Coleman, and that this is a heavily used facility that has seen a significant increase in activity recently, causing um, additional staffing uh, to be brought on board to address those needs associated with all that increased activity and a large capital improvement anticipated in the near future necessitates that we devise a plan to generate revenue to pay for that costs. Um, and that's all I wanted to comment on. Thank you. Thank you, Director Mill. Moving to Marine and Environmental Affairs Director. Director Lawson, do you or your staff have comments or justification for the proposed fee changes? Uh, good morning and thank you, Manager Ells. Derek Lawson, Director of Marine and Environmental Affairs. Uh, I just want to point out that the um, Sandy Neck Board did approve these proposed changes. Uh, with me today is uh, Nina Coleman. She is the Director of Natural Resources as well as the Sandy Neck uh, Beach Park Manager. And with the rationale, I'll turn it over to Nina. Uh, thank you. Good morning, Nina Coleman, Sandy Neck Park Manager. Um, and I know these proposals are a little confusing, so I just want to take a minute um, and go through them uh, category by category. Um, in the special permit category, um, we are seeing larger and larger groups on our beach, um, weddings, reunions, um, and we felt we needed a fee similar to the rec department for those larger groups that take more staff time. So that's why we created a hundred uh, over a hundred uh, person category. Um, campfires uh, for the public beach um, is a, a separate permit. If you don't have an off-road vehicle permit, um, there is an opportunity to have a campfire in Sandy Neck. It's one of the only places on the Cape, extremely popular. For reference, we sold 455 campfire permits in 2022. Um, and we want to increase that from 10 to $20. Um, staffing is required to manage uh, these gatherings in order to ensure public safety and compliance with our rules and regulations. Uh, tasks include issuing permits, cleaning the bathhouse, enforce, enforcing time limits and locations of fires, handling group dynamics, which is one of the things we do at Sandy Neck. Um, and safety concerns and ensuring proper fire extinguishing and beach cleanup. So it's, it is a big program I, and very popular. Um, and I wanted to speak to that as that came up last time. Um, with regard to the off-road vehicle permit increase, um, these have not increased since 2020. And um, we're looking to uh, in, in, increase our fees to cover Sandy Neck Beach Park operations. And as Mark Mill uh, alluded to, our future capital improvement project. Um, costs have increased in the following categories, staffing, sanitation equipment, rubbish removal, police and police details. Um, when we looked at this category, uh, we looked to other beaches um, on the Cape and, and near the Cape. Um, and we, we found that uh, non-resident permits were 
considerably higher at those other beaches um, than what we're charging at Sandy Neck. And Sandy Neck is very, very popular. And every year we have more and more non-residents enjoying our beach. Um, so we broke out of our traditional two to one ratio where um, residents uh, were at one and non-residents were at two. We actually broke out of that fee ratio um, and we're requesting a increase in just the non-residents this year for $30. We'd like to keep the residents at the same amount um, and increase that non-resident to, to improve the, the revenue stream um, in order to cover those costs. Uh, Mr. Town Manager, you spoke to the decrease in, uh, in the um, ORV fee for the winter. I just wanna speak to that really quickly. There are not that many that we sell. This is sort of dead of winter permit that we sell uh, the day after Columbus Day. Typically it's um, the hunters and the fishermen that uh, wanna get that off season beach permit. Um, and we wanted to decrease that because we've changed our, um, our, fee, our permit to be a calendar year. So this, this permit is really only for a few months. Um, so we're just trying to adjust now that we've adjusted um, our permits to calendar year, which is where MEA is heading. Uh, we wanna adjust all our permits to be a calendar year to be less confusing. Finally, uh, I just wanna speak briefly to the, um, the camper fee increase. Um, campers come in two varieties. Uh, there's the slide on camper and then there's the RV. Um, and the RVs tend to be two wheel drive. They tend to be um, quite large. Um, and so we wanna change into a two tier fee for campers. Um, this is because RVs uh, take up more room and space on the beach uh, because they're, and because they're two wheel drive, um, there's much more, there's many more issues with them uh, with regard to access and getting stuck on our access trail. So I hope that explained the somewhat confusing um, proposal and, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Um, one question, uh, has this been before the Sandy Neck Board and did they support these recommended changes? Yes, sir. The board uh, endorsed uh, the proposed fees. So they spoke to, they had two meetings, uh, September 12th and October 17th in 2022 with a vote in October. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, at this time, uh, do we have any public comment? It does not appear that we have any public comment for this item. All right. Thank you. Um, I will hold my comments about how I'm going to take fees under advisement until after the next category in MEA, then I'll state it again. Um, next category is recreational shellfish. The residential renewal, well, first of all, to support what um, Ms. Coleman said a moment ago, MEA is moving to a calendar year fee. Currently, our recreational shell fishing permit begins March 1st. So some of the adjustments that are described here are relevant to the fact that on January 1st, they're going to be selling recreational shellfish permits for the calendar year 2023. And I'll, when I get to each one, I'll try to explain that justification, and then I will allow MEA staff to support that justification. So in the category of residential renewal, from and they reference it from January 1st to February 28th, because if you hold a recreational shellfish permit now, which will remain valid till March 1st, in theory, you don't have to buy a permit until March 1st. But if you choose to buy your permit on January 1st, and that permit would be good from January 1st to December 31st of 2023, you would pay 20, I'm sorry, $33. Now that's because you've already paid for two months of your shellfish permit that currently expires in March. But in an effort to try to get onto an annual calendar year fee, they would adjust appropriately. So when you renew, if you buy January 1, 
it's going to be for $33 because you've already paid us through March 1st. You wait till March 1st, you're going to buy a permit for $40 through the end of December. It will not go until March of the following year. So even though that says no change, I think that's important to know. That the permit will end December 31st. And in 2024, you will need to renew on January 1st. In the senior residential renewal category, it's the same explanation. If you buy it on January 1st, you will pay $25 or $5 less than 30, which was the current fee for an annual renewal because you have already paid for January and February last year. If you renew on March 1st, you will pay $30 and it will be through December 31st. For non-residential renewal, again, if you renew in January, you will you would have paid for an annual renewal 140, but because you've already paid for two months, you will pay $117 through December 31st. That's $23 less than a nor what would have been an annual renewal. If you buy it on March 1st, you're going to pay $140 through December 31st. That concludes the proposed fee changes to recreational shell fishing. And at this point, I'll ask Director Mel if he has any comments. Thank you, Tom Andrews. No, I just I would comment that I agree with the realignment to a calendar year to make it less confusing, and I appreciate that. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Director Mel. At this time, I will go to Marine and Environmental Affairs Director Lawson or his staff to provide comment or up or uh, justification. Yes, thank you, Manager Ailes. Um, yes, uh, with MEA trying to uh, move to a calendar year permit cycle, um, we've been able to do this because of our new uh, software online where we can uh, issue these permits online. And uh, it's just the direction that we're looking to move to. Um, this has been approved by the Shellfish Committee. And uh, for rationale, I'll ask Director of Natural Resources, Nina Coleman. Uh, thank you, uh, Nina Coleman. Um, I think I'm gonna leave it uh, right where it is. Um, I think that you gave a very good explanation, um, Town Manager Ells, and I think the the word that you know, maybe sort of encapsulates what we're trying to do is prorate. Um, so we're trying to prorate as we transition um, to a calendar year, which I think is gonna be easier and less confusing for everyone. Um, and we're really excited and our software is gonna do an excellent job of of moving in this direction for all our MEA permits, which are of course the town fund permits. So you get one bill where you're able to get um, all of your uh, MEA permits right around the first of the year. So uh, that's the effort um, and, and I hope this will achieve it um, as, as, uh, as easy as possible for our residents. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now I will move to public comment. Is there any public comment? There does not appear to be any public comment on this item. Well, thank you very much. So at this point, I will take these proposed fees for Marine and Environmental Affairs under advisement. As I've explained, um, we will, I will make a decision um, after 30 days have lapsed. I, I encourage public comment by any and all means relevant to these. And as described previously, I will either approve as proposed, approve less than proposed, or approve or not approve, and therefore the current fee will stand. All right, thank you all from MEA. We appreciate your explanation. Finally, I will move to taxi rates. 
proposed tax rates. And, and in effect, those fall under town manager's office and our director of licensing. Our taxi rates as proposed. Um, so our um, first, first mile, and I'll, I'll ask, uh, our director to go into a little more detail on the description terms for each of these is currently at three dollars. It would move to three fifty or a fifty cent change. Third to fifth miles would go from two ten or to two forty or a thirty cent increase. First mile total would be five ten current to five ninety or an 80 cent increase. Second mile added, currently 350, and it would move to $4 or a 50 cent increase. Second mile total, currently 860, it would move to 990 or a dollar and 30 cent increase. 2.2 mile average trip would is currently 140, would move to 160 or a 20 cent increase and 2.2 Two mile average trip total, currently ten dollars. It would move to twelve dollars, um, which is a two dollar increase. So I'm I would ask um, Director Hartsgrove when we get to that to explain maybe a typo under change as it's listed as one point five dollars. At this time, I would ask Director of Finance Mark Milne if he has any comments. Uh, thank you, Tom Manager Ellis. Uh, just a clarifying question. Are these proposed changes um, going to affect January 1 or at a later date? I believe it's January 1 is listed in the um, notice, but I, again, when we get next, I'll, I'll ask uh, Director Hartsgrove to address that when we get there or her, or her staff. Thank you, Director Mill. All right, at this time, I would ask Elizabeth Hartsgrove or her designee to address these proposed changes. Thank you, Town Manager Ells. Liz Hartsgrove, Licensing Director. Um, these fees were requested by a licensed operator for consideration um, during this calendar year fee, increase, um, fee hearing. This would go into effect, Director Milne, on uh, January 1st, in line with all of the other calendar year fees. Um, this fee is actually collected not by the town. This is not a town revenue, so this is a little different than the previous considerations during this um, hearing. So this is actually collected by the operator, and these fees are set within the regulations under your purview as the licensing authority. So um, just to recap on this, actually the existing rate for meters, which actually is set by the Weights and Measures Division, the taxis in our community are on a meter system rather than a set rate system, um, similar to other communities here on the Cape. Um, but the existing meter rate is actually $3 for the first two fifths of a mile and 70 cents each additional one fifth of a mile. And the request is to increase it 50 cents um, for the first two fifths of a mile. So going from $3 to $3.50. And then um, for each additional one fifth of a mile, it would go from 70 cents to 80 cents. So a 10 cent increase for each one fifth of a mile. Um, and then the request also by this uh, licensed operator is to consider also a gradual increase every five, um, every two years to go along with um, 0.5 uh, proposition 2.5 um, so that way there's an inflation considering inflation so every two years it would be a five um, a five percent increase gradually we did do surveys um, we did outreach public outreach um, as far as the town um, staff support to see what the community input was so we 
sent out a press release. We also did the survey and made it available to the general public. We did handouts, we did postings as well at certain areas, including medical facilities, areas where typical users of the service is. Um, including also the HYCC where children are. We sent them to schools to um, reach out to families. We know that also um, a lot of students utilize taxi services. And then we also sent it out to the other transportation companies such as Highline and the Steamship Authority to see if what their viewpoint and they're also, um, their customers might have an impact and what their voices were. Um, what their viewpoint is for this. And we did receive 41 responses to the survey and overwhelming and it ranged the age group for that um, survey actually eight, ranged from um, between 18 all the way up to 81 and above. So it was a very diverse um, group that made comments and 65 um, excuse me, 62% of the 41 that responded are in favor of this increase. Other than that, that is all I have for you, Mr. Mr. Ellis. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, at this time, is there any public comment? Yes, I believe John, that you are here for public comment on this item. Uh, yes, I'm actually in John's office. Uh, my name is Peter Cutler, and uh, I'm from Town Taxi of Cape Cod. And obviously, I'm here to uh, request the rate increase for all the reasons that uh, were uh, mentioned. However, we have not had a rate increase since 2015 in June, so it's been seven and a half years. Obviously, we've experienced huge increases in our and our expenses, some as high as uh, over 100%. Therefore, I feel that this request is a uh, reasonable one. And I'd be willing to, I'm willing to take any questions uh, anyone may have. Thank you, sir. Appreciate your public comment. Is there any other public comment at this time? There is no additional public comment on this item. Okay. Well, seeing none, um, at this time, I will, as previously described, take these proposed fees for calendar year 2023 under advisement for 30 days. And after that period, we'll issue either an approval of the proposed fees, a reduction of the proposed fee, or not accept them and the current fee will stand. And um, I also at this time conclude this uh, town manager hearing. So I thank you for your participation staff and for your the public's um, you know, participation and hopefully viewing over the next 30 day period and encourage your comments. Again, Mark Ellis, town manager. Thank you.